Hello Chess Remington, welcome to your Out of Chess channel and welcome to an absolutely game-changing brilliancy play by the latest version of Stockfish, the powerful Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine, Black Marlin, in a beautiful Queen's Gambit decline, Rago's in defense. But today's game will be really, really spectacular because Stockfish will introduce to us uh, here a beautiful theoretical novelty in the Rago's defense, com completely new method, a completely new idea that has never been played in chess history before, in my opinion, really one of the most important games that has been played so far by Stockfish 16 because the Ragos defense is still I think a very often played a very popular defense uh, against D4 for instance Anish Giri won a game with the black pieces against big Magnus Carlsen uh, in the Ragos defense which is really really crazy so it's still often played in top GM level so that's why uh, we are searching of course for theoretical novelties improvements in this very very often played openings in my opinion as I said really a beautiful but also important game here played by Stockfish 16 so Let's see now what happened with the white pieces. The fish opened with the move c4. The game started as an English opening, but after a couple more moves, uh, transposed now into the three ninth variation of the queen's game decline. We have now the move bishop to b4. This is now the Ragos in defense, hitting the knight on c3, and of course preparing the hop of the knight on e4, putting more pressure against the knight on c3. I've analyzed this Ragos defense here on my YouTube chess channel as a special subject uh, of the queen's game decline studies that we have created here on my youtube chat channel please check it out uh here's the link of the playlist you can have also a uh, great preparation in other sidelines in other possibilities of this amazing chess opening so after move bishop to b4 stockfish goes into this exchange variation c takes d5 which is a line that I would also recommend to to play because after C takes D5, uh, the attack by Black is a little bit splashed here. The dynamics is off the board now. It's not so complicated when we trade off the pawns now in the center of the board. It's not so complicated to play now uh, the game at least for a while later. Of course, we can complicate things, but at least not immediately uh, while things can happen. So after move C takes D5, we have now the move E takes D5, and basically uh, now you don't want to play E3. That's of course locking out now your bishop. Basically. You have two choices you play bishop to f4 or bishop to g5 hitting the knight for instance if you play bishop to g5 then you're running many times into some wild lines f or h6 g5 g4 h4 and similar stuff so black could have an expansion by kicking away your bishop here on g5 so that's why here bishop to f4 is now really one of the most popular ways for white to proceed in in this particular sidelines i've removed bishop to f4 now comes this idea knight to e4 stockfish plays a very important check queen to a4 forces now uh the move knight to c6 uh, this has to be played now by black um of course the downside for black after move knight to c6 is that you cannot proceed with c5 so that's why this move queen to a4 is in my opinion really a perfect continuation for white not allowing c5 if that happens then of course many many great tactical things could happen here for for blacks so after move queen to a4 that's why knight to c6 we have rook to c1 connecting now the rook to the knight we have a kingside casting and now comes the crit moment of this particular game many things can be played and many things have been played uh here from white's perspective uh for instance a3 is perfectly fine kick away the bishop also what is perfectly fine is the normal move e3 g3 is for instance also an opportunity to con continue with bishop to g2 or even h3 is perfectly fine because then you're creating also breeding spaces for a bishop on h2 as i said these are the normal methods the normal moves that have been played so far in chess history in the galaragos in defense from white's perspective but now comes the critical moment already in the game here stockfish introduces to us a theoretical novelty a beautiful h4 a move that has never been played in chess history and very really, very really wild stuff creating immediately a flank attack putting more pressure against the king because stockfish says i feel secure with my king in the center i don't want to touch anything so far in the center i'm just immediately attacking the king show me what you got show me how you're going to defend this position really really wild stuff so black martin plays i think a decent choice bishop to f5 supports further the knight on e4 we have e3 normal development and now a6 with the preparation to play the move b5 stockfish continues now the pressure against the knight on e5 uh with, with the move knight on e5 uh, of course the knight on c6 is a little bit stuck to the defense of 
uh, the bishop on b4. So that's why uh, Stoffish is trying to deflect the knight from this uh, defense of the bishop. So that's why here we have knight to c3 first by uh, black marlin. We have b takes c3 and now bishop to d6 here by uh, black marlin engine. So what to do here? Here in the game, knight to d3 was played by Stoffer 16. Good choice, of course. If you play something like knight to c6 after bishop to f4, e takes f4, the e file is going to get opened and you could face many, many tactical problems. So that's why knight to d3 connecting now uh, here the knight to the bishop we have bishop to e7 if you play of course bishop to f4 it doesn't bring you anything because then we have this one knight to f4 and in my opinion white should be perfectly fine if you get even the c4 somehow um, working here this is perfectly fine then after queen to c4 you could have i think a great c file attack so that's why after move knight to d3 here the black marlin retreated to e7 hits of course now uh, the bishop uh, the pawn on h4 and now my question here for you is what would you do now in this particular position maybe you can pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for white because now comes also i think one of the critical moments of the game because now white has to find this next best move in order to stay in the game because we have to say it white's king is still stuck in the center so there is i think only one good continuation for white it's not as i said one of those um chess puzzles in which you have to maybe find here immediately winning continuation for white i just want to here to find really the best continuation what would you do now what would be your continuation here from from white's perspective okay here the best choice is a strange move a retreating move to d1 but this move is creating many many things first of all it supports the further attacking chances here with f3 g4 so the queen is supporting the potential flank attack now on the king side also what the, this move is doing is of course creating a potential after bishop to h4 a potential rook and queen battery uh here on the h file so it's hard then for uh, for black to pick up now the pawn on h4 so this is not working really really beautiful beautiful calm but spectacular move here by Stoffer 16 because it's very hard in chess to find retreating moves good retreating moves this is one of them i think for sure great move here by Stoffer 16 knight to a5 here black marlin is hitting the weak square on c4 we have h5 knight to c4 but okay you have now this powerful knight you have an octopus knight you have uh this cemented knight on this beautiful square but what is this knight attacking this knight is not attacking anything it doesn't have support they're simply even not good targets that white uh, that black could attack here in this particular position so nothing spectacular is going on actually here on the queen side so this whole maneuver of the knight on c4 is i think is a li little bit misplaced because it's basically attacking nothing here uh, from black's perspective so stoffish continues with his own plan g4 this is the way to go and you see now why this move uh, queen to d1 was also important now you have even opportunities to play the move f3 if bishop to e4 would have been played here by black marlin so that's why black marlin retreats to e6 knight to c5 very very interesting move here by stockfish hitting the bishop on e6 and let's see now what happens for instance if you play bishop to c5 this wasn't played in the game but i was really curious why didn't black marlin simply get rid of this powerful knight on c5 here after bishop to c5 you have this one d takes c5 and you have to play now h6 in order to prevent g5 here by white but now look at this after potential rook to g1 again you could maybe try f6 preventing again g5 but now we play a simple bishop to c4 and bishop to c4 would cause many many positional problems in uh, black's camp because after d takes c4 we trade off now the queens and now after rook to d8 look at this this pawn is weak we have opportunities to hit also the weak b7 uh, with the move rook to b1 if you play rook to b8 you see then you're running into to, uh, tactics because the bishop is covering the square b8 so so far very very messed up game i think for black all of this is this opposite colored bishops middle game slash end game in which maybe black can survive but i'm not sure because of the possible attacks here by white on the b file and also against uh, the pawn on c7 so this is not working in my opinion here for black so after move knight to c5 that's why black marlin cemented simply the position here on the queen side by playing the move b5 we have h6 creating of course many many dark weaknesses here 
in black's position we have now rook to b1 we have knight to b6 and now bishop to d3 bishop to d6 queen to f3 very important move connecting now the queen uh, to the bishop on f4 queen to e7 here by uh, black marlin and now queen to g3 putting more pressure against the bishop on d6 now comes another critical moment of the game here black marlin took bishop to c5 we have d takes c5 queen to c5 but obviously look at this there are now many many dark were problems that um, black has to defend if you don't react correctly bishop to d4 is going to happen then uh, queen to e5 then we deliver checkmate in some line so you have to now play the best defensive move so here after bishop to e5 rook to e8 was played by back black marlin trying of course to liberate the square for the queen that is of course then protecting the square g7 we have bishop to d4 queen to e7 and again a new critical moment of this particular game again i'm asking you here what would you do now in this particular position what would be now the best conscientious here for white pause the video and try to see now uh i would even say maybe even the winning idea here for white it's hard to see because it's not the obvious move that everyone's thinking of it's really crazy how stockfish is seeing everything here okay here the best idea is actually to play the move bishop takes b6 really really wild stuff who would think about this move because our Darko bishop is simply the best minor piece on the board why should we trade it off for the knight on b6 because obviously we thought queen to e5 should be the winning move but look at this after queen to e5 f6 after a couple of trades of queens this position is not so complicated anymore for black black can defend this position and also you have some worries with the square g4 so okay black has maybe here some dark core problems but i guarantee you white has also some light score problems here knight to c4 is going to happen so in my opinion not a good conciliation uh, here for white so after uh, bishop to b6 that stockfish played and the obvious c takes b6 now comes queen to e5 and the problem is now after potential f6 that you could play will simply retreat now to d4 and in my opinion after move a4 you could face now many many problems here on the queen side so very very interesting choice after move queen to e5 black martin retreated here to f8 controls now the square g7 but now the queen is simply overloaded to the defense of uh, the square uh, of the square g7 stockfish continues with queen to d4 attacks now the weak pawn on b6 we have rook to, rook to c8 attacking also the c3 weakness and now a4 this is a good move here by stockfish liberating now the b file getting use of the attack by the rook on b1 b takes a4 rook to b6 okay you have an extra pawn but this is now a weakened pawn structure this is not of course a problem now for stockfish to hold on on the queen side and the, still there is this issue the queen is still stuck to the defense of the g7 square a3 we have g5 good move by the fish controlling f6 not allowing a uh, black to cement his position on dark word a5 we have queenside castling finally we are now in move 32 and stockfish finally castles finally secure the king really really wild stuff rook to b8 we have rook takes b8 uh rook takes b8 and now again a beautiful move queen to f6 uh, not allowing here uh this pawn move f5 or f6 rook to b3 we have rook to a1 bishop to h3 and now queen to e5 simply putting more pressure against uh, the weak pawn on d5 if you play here uh bishop to e6 the problem is now this motif bishop to c2 you step back here with the rook but now you hit the pawn you're not even reacting here to the attack of uh, the rook against the bishop because if f6 happens then we have this one queen to e6 if you pick up now the piece then the winning idea is here this one rook to b3 with the preparation to play rook to b8 and there's simply no good defense against this move white is winning the game for sure really really wild stuff so after move queen to e5 black marlin tried now to move a4 bishop to c2 rook to b2 and now again the same motif rook takes a3 you sack the bishop you play rook to a4 again you're trying rook to a8 now in a different method here with the move rook to b8 of course the queen gets trapped but now with rook to a8 we're trying to deflect the queen from the defense of the square g7 and deliver checkmate here black marlin tried d4 we have now this idea rook to a8 and now after a couple more moves this is game over this is even a forced checkmate because black can always deliver a couple of che uh, checks but never really perpetuals never really good checks and after move king to f4 in this particular position the black marlin engine resigned what you can do again just prolong the, the game we play something like king to h4 but you cannot even get away with the king after rook to f8 this would be a beautiful beautiful checkmate here by stalker 16. so 
Pooh, really interesting ideas, I think, in the Lagos defense. I'm not sure how many of us would dare to play this move H4 in the beginning because black is pretty solid here, white is also pretty solid here. Um, this was now the new move that has been introduced to us uh, here by the Stoffish engine. In really interesting choice. Let me see, has everyone played it in uh, in the Leech as database? There are, mm, let me see, two. There is there are two games in the database uh, in, in on Leeches that have been played in 2022, one and in one in 2020. So both of them were winning games by Black, which is also something that we should notice. So still, it's a risky plan to hit the flanks with the move H4, probably. But uh, Stoffish can play whatever Stoffish wants to because Stoffish is, of course, the beast in these types of positions where it creates immediate attacks. In my opinion, a really spectacular game here played by Stoffish 16. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. If you want to see more about the Ragozin and more about some brutal Stoffish games, check out our play both playlist here. Here are the links of uh, really the most important playlist here on my YouTube chat channel. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say? Chess is the best, of course.